Divinity Original Sin 2 is one of those rare RPGs that really challenges you not to only pay attention to everything around you, but also use the mechanics that the game gives you to make the best of your experience. Since this has consumed my life since release, I'm going to do you all a solid and let you in on some great tips to start the game. Considering how vast this game is, I chose only the 10 best essential tips I could possibly need upon starting the game over. If this video does well enough, I will possibly do another one more in-depth on some advanced tips. I hope you're enjoying your adventure. Take your time making a character for you. There's no reason to rush a character or just run through it blindly. You already bought the game, take some time and make a character you want to play the game as. Look through all the steps, they are very important. And yes, you can respec your character later in the game so you aren't locked in, but do make someone that you like. As a side note, if you're playing a solo campaign, consider taking the Lone Wolf perk as it really changes the flow of the game with small two-person party. And don't be afraid of undead characters because they have their own unique quirks. The bedroll is so damn important to this game. It seems like a really silly little thing, but you gotta pick it up. It's literally the fifth item you can pick up in the entire game. A bedroll is used outside of combat to heal all party members a great deal. This doesn't consume the bedroll, so make sure you are carrying one to save on your healing items. Fast travel has got to be one of the main things that I've been seeing and hearing people miss while playing the game. I have yelled at many a screen watching my friends and fellow streamers and YouTubers playing this game. The large portal pins on the map indicate a fast travel point. You do need to approach it to activate it, but fast travel can be activated from the HUD's anchor button up in the top right and can be used anywhere. One more thing, you can fast travel a dead companion and resurrect them in a safe environment. Not a lot of people know this. Not everything is worth picking up, this isn't Fallout, but you can auto-sort your inventory of the entire party by clicking the auto-sort button at the top right of your HUD. You can also sort by value, weight, and other categories to help while dealing with traders. Also, you can store various items in backpacks you start the game with. I personally source sellable equipment in mine so that I know I won't end up auto, you know, equipping it accidentally until I can sell it. And lastly, holding shift and clicking on stuff in your inventory adds things to your wares. This is stuff that will automatically be put up for sale with vendors. Handy tip. Okay, now let's talk some hotkeys. These three hotkeys will help you a ton in the game as they've done a big, 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 big butt ton for me. And for some reason, people miss them. I have no idea why. Firstly, left shift highlights all NPC and mob areas of vision. This allows you to see where they can see. This area has two shades of red. The darker, more transparent red is where they can see, but you can still sneak through. Lighter, thicker red is where they can catch you and pull you out of sneak. Left Alt highlights all items on the ground that you can pick up or interact with, and Control while held will allow you to attack by toggling it. This can be very useful to get an extra attack prior to combat. Lockpicks can be crafted with nails and a hammer, or a key and some soap. The hammer will also not be used up. Barrels of oil, ooze, and water can be used to craft many things from elemental arrows to poison potions. Nails can also make your boots immune to slipping and falling by combining the two at an anvil. Also, hang on to all elements and sheets of paper you get. These are very valuable for making scrolls later on. Keep all ooze barrels you find. You can teleport them back to a waypoint and drop them there for later use. These can be used to make poison potions which heal the undead. Also, you can grind away all lockpicks to sell for money because undead characters can lockpick for free if their skill is high enough. Last but not least, if you don't want to show your helmet on your character, you can safely disable it in the equipment menu by hitting the arrow next to it without scaring the people around you. Two incredibly useful pieces of equipment you want to get early on in Fort Joy are the Gloves of Teleportation and Migo's Ring. Both can be gathered from quests around Fort Joy's main square. 
Miko's ring from the Murderous Geist quest. This ring grants magic armor and also enables you to use the restoration spell while it's on. The gloves of teleportation, however, are far more interesting. From Gawain in the main ghetto, you get the quest, The Teleporter. After fighting some nasty crocs, you get the magical gauntlets that allow you to use the teleport spell. This can be used to break the game's mechanics, teleport enemies away in combat, teleport distant enemies to you, teleport distant items to you, or simply go through certain secret areas in the game. A very simple tip for this one. Many didn't know that you were able to bank AP in combat. If you can't do anything valuable during your turn and you're still sitting on a point or two, just end your turn. These points will transfer to your next turn. Next up, you can delay your own turn to let enemies move first. This can be pretty useful to let distant melee mobs move closer to you and then you strike them rather than the other way around. And lastly, prep for all your battles. Consume your buffs, summon your incarnates, and cast spells for free beforehand. That way you aren't using valuable turn space to start the combat. This is the perfect one to close the video because there's so much you can miss in this game. The starting tutorial area, if you can even call it that, has around 20 to 30 hours of content alone. Make sure you explore talk to people, complete your quests, level up, go into places, get beat to a pulp, go level up more, go back and kill those guys, save every time you make a decision because things can and will go wrong. This game is one of those rare ones that is what you make it. If you play it to be boring, it'll be boring. If you play it to be epic, it'll be epic. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something from this video, and if you did, feel free to comment down below and hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel and share this with your other RPG friends. I'll catch you guys later.